Have you ever wondered how to pull off strong lighting and glowing animations in After Effects? Well, whether you're doing a logo animation, title, or anything that's focused at the center of your comp, taking your work to the next level is as simple as turning on the lights. Hey everyone, this is Jordan with Sonduck Film. I'm still alive if you haven't watched our last video. Anyways, please like this video for the YouTube algorithm. It helps out way more than you think. The core concept of this project is not only to create something really cool, but to use lighting techniques to control the mood of your project. So let's get started and jump into these animation techniques. All right, so to start off, we're gonna make our center shape layers and create the central lighting that the rest of the composition is gonna react to. To start, we're gonna select the rounded rectangle tool, make sure fill is set to none, stroke is set to solid color, stroke width is set to three, then hold shift and click and drag to create a perfect square. For this project, I'm using this square shape, but you can use really any shape that you want. You can even use an outline of your logo if you wanted to, it's completely up to you. Hold down the control key and double click the pan behind tool to center the anchor point of the shape layer, then navigate to the align tab and click align vertically and horizontally to center the square in the middle of the composition. We'll rename the shape layer to center shape, then go up to effect, perspective, drop shadow, and effect, stylize, glow. For the drop shadow effect, I'm gonna set the color to a nice light blue, but you can set it to whatever color you'd like, just make sure it's on the brighter side because this is gonna be our light source. Bring the distance of the drop shadow down to 0, increase the softness to 20, then highlight the drop shadow effect, duplicate it, and increase the softness of the second drop shadow to 80. Now for the glow, we want to set the glow intensity to 2.5, set glow colors to A and B colors, set color looping to sawtooth B greater than A, and set color A to the same light blue as the drop shadow. Duplicate the glow effect, increase the glow threshold to 75%, increase the glow radius to 175, hold down the alt key and click the stopwatch next to glow radius and in the expression controls panel type in wiggle parentheses 2 comma 100. This is going to add a slight flickering effect to the glow to give off the effect of a real light source. Now duplicate the glow one more time, click the reset button to put it back to its default values and alt click the stopwatch next to glow radius to remove the expression. Next, duplicate the entire center shape layer, highlight this new layer, put it underneath of the original, and decrease its stroke width to 1. Go to the effect controls panel and alt click the expression for glow radius to get rid of it, press R to adjust the rotation and set the shape to a 45 degree angle, press S to adjust the scale and increase it until it's just a bit bigger than the original. Lastly, duplicate the original center shape, rename it to center shape blur, Put it between the original two shape layers, go to the effect controls panel, delete all of the effects, then go to effect, blur and sharpen, CC radial fast blur. Set the center of the blur to be above and to the left of the shape layers and increase the amount just a little bit to give off this nice light ray effect. And now we have our main shape layers and light source set up to work with the rest of the composition. If you like the style of motion graphics in this video and you want a quick and easy way to add them to your projects with the click of a button, check out our brand new Pulse Pack. It includes over 150 stylized motion graphics to enhance your projects and make them stand out. With our easy to use Atom X extension, all you have to do is find a graphic you like and hit apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can easily customize the composition with our simple to use control layers and edit the different elements to fit your needs. And just like that, you have a stunning custom composition to use in your projects. Check out the link in the description or visit sonduckfilm.com for more info. Before we move on to the next technique, I want to take a quick look at our background layer. The background layer helps to set the overall mood for the comp, so we want to make sure it complements our main layers. The only effect we have on our background is this gradient ramp, and we set it up to be a radial ramp that's a very dark version of the blue we used in the first technique that ramps up into an even darker blue. That's what makes it give off this cool dark blue vignette effect that helps to really enhance the project. Next, we're going to create a shaded sphere that reacts to the main light source and use it to fill out our composition. Start by going to Layer, New, Solid, name the solid to Sphere, set the color to be the same color you used as the drop shadow and glow, then click OK. Now with the solid highlighted, go to Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere, Effect, Stylize, Glow, and Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur. In the effect controls panel for the sphere effect, we're going to open the light tab, set the light intensity to 150, and the light height to negative 70 so you create an eclipse-like effect just like this. 
open the shading tab, we'll decrease the ambient to 2, set specular to 100, increase the roughness by just a little bit, set the reflective to 3, and set the reflection map to be our background layer. For the glow, we're going to decrease the threshold to about 40, increase the radius to a bit over 100, duplicate the glow, reset it, set the radius to 200, alt-click the stopwatch and type out the same wiggle expression that we used last time. Duplicate the glow layer one more time, reset it again, alt-click the stopwatch to remove the expression, increase the radius to about 350, set the glow intensity to 8, then increase the blurriness of the Gaussian blur by just a tiny bit and enable repeat edge pixels to soften the edges. Enable motion blur and set the sphere to be a 3D layer by clicking the checkboxes to the right of it on the layer panel. Press P for position, alt-click the stopwatch, then type in wiggle parentheses 0.3,50 to add some positional shaking to the shape. Now that we have our circles set up, we need to start duplicating them to fill out our composition. For each circle layer, what you want to do is go to the effect controls panel, set the offset to where you want the circle to be, change the radius, and adjust the light direction so that it's facing towards the center of the composition. The reason that we want it to face the center is so that it gives off the illusion that our center light source is being cast onto it and creating a shadow. Since the center layer is down into the left of this circle, I'm going to set the light direction to be the same. Now duplicate the sphere and repeat the process of changing the offset, radius, and light direction until you have a composition filled with different sized spheres being lit by our center shape layer. And after you're done, you should have a composition that looks something like this with a bunch of different spheres all around it. The last step for finishing this composition is creating a bunch of adjustment layers to help blend all of the lighting effects that we've created. Start by going up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, duplicate the adjustment layer three times, rename the first one Brightness, second one Noise, third one Blur, and fourth one Vignette. For the Brightness layer, go to Effect, Color Correction, Brightness and Contrast, Effect, Stylize, Glow, then alt-click the stopwatch for brightness and type in wiggle parentheses 2, comma, 50. Set the glow threshold to 100%, radius to 0, duplicate the glow effect, and increase the radius to be somewhere between 400 and 500. This glow effect on the adjustment layer helps to add a haze effect that goes over the whole composition. Now make sure the adjustment layer is highlighted and select the ellipse tool, Hold down Shift and Control at the same time, then click and drag from the center of the screen to create a big circular mask. Then open up that mask, invert it, and increase the feather to around 200 pixels. Select the Noise layer, go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, increase the amount by just a bit, and uncheck Use Color Noise. Go back to the Brightness layer, open it up, copy the mask we just made, and then paste it onto the blur layer, then go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Camera Lens Blur. Set the blur radius of the camera blur to 16, enable repeat edge pixels, then open up the layer, open the mask, set a keyframe for mask expansion, set the expansion to around negative 350, move to 1 second on the timeline, and set the expansion back to 0. Highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease keyframes, Alt-click the stopwatch for expansion, and type in loop out with a capital O, parentheses, quotations, ping pong, to make the animation loop back and forth. Lastly, we'll set up the vignette layer. A vignette is a quick and easy central lighting technique that brings focus to the center of the composition. Make sure the layer is highlighted, then go up to Effect, Stylize, CC Vignette, and increase the vignette amount to about 200 to darken the edges. And there you have it, an amazing composition using multiple lighting techniques to give off this realistic central light source effect. Now with the lights on and after effects, you're ready to control the mood of your work. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe to Sonduck Film for more post-production tutorials every week. You can also hit us up on our Instagram for even more after effects tutorials, and remember, always be creating.